Welcome to a deep dive into the dynamic input command. So the dynamic input provides a heads up display of command prompts at your cursor. Uh, it allows you to work more efficiently without frequently glancing at the command line. Uh, it's been around actually since 2006, but if you're like most users, we tend to use the software however we were taught. I think the dynamic input functionality is one of those things that you can easily adopt and become more productive with. Let's explore it. So by default, dynamic input is actually turned on in AutoCAD. If you issue any of your draw commands, for instance, the line command, and you see something on your cursor, uh, that specify point with some XY coordinates, that functionality, there is dynamic input. I can easily toggle that off by hitting my F12 key. And now my dynamic input functionality is not on. So F12 brings it back on. All right. With my dynamic input on, if uh, I wanted to go ahead and draw uh, absolute coordinates to essentially make a box at these four points. So I would start by typing one comma one and get my uh, line to start there. Then I would want to type in, let's go to two comma one and hit enter. Maybe type in two comma two, hit enter. And notice it's not going to where I want it to go. I keyed in absolute X, Y coordinate values, but take a look at my command prompt. It didn't record absolute X, Y coordinate values. It actually put an at symbol in front of my values and assumed we want relative X, Y coordinates. So that's not what we wanted. So let's try this again. Let me undo there, back to the line command. Again, I want to start it at one comma one. If you are going to work and you need absolute coordinates with your dyna dynamic input turned on, you got to hit the number sign. These days we call it the hashtag. So before I start my X comma Y value, the first thing I gotta type is the hashtag. So hashtag two comma one, enter. And then hashtag two comma two, and enter. Now, if I happen to, you know, and like I don't wanna hit the hashtag, that's an extra key. I can always toggle my dynamic input off, right? So I could toggle, hit F12, toggle it off. And now I don't have to hit the hashtag it'll recognize absolute coordinates. So I want to go to one comma two, no hashtag here, and then down to one comma one to get me back to where I started and hit enter there and enter to finish off. So if you want to see your dynamic input down on your status bar, you want to come down to the very bottom right corner where the three lines are for customization. Go all the way up to the top, about the six one down, click on dynamic input, and just click out in space to put that menu away. And about the fourth one over uh, is the dynamic input command. So I can toggle it on and off here, or as I showed you before, I can toggle it off by hitting my F12 key. Now, I wanna leave it on because I wanna show you some other things when you're keying in coordinates that affect dynamic input. So I'll start my line command again, click a spot to start it. And notice I get these in canvas dimensions. It's actually the values of a polar coordinate. It's a linear value and an angular value. So if I accurately want a two inch long line at 45 degrees, I can type in two and hit my tab key to cycle through the other value, in this case, the angular value, 45, and hit enter. Enter to finish off, and I got my two inch long line at 45 degrees. Now, a key thing to pay attention to is how dynamic input is measuring your angle value. So if I start that line command again from the same point, notice as I'm moving counterclockwise, everything's going, you know, it's straight up to 90 degrees for that angular value. Um, keep going around. Watch what I can get to 180, but watch what happens when I pass 180. It changes the direction that it measures from. So now it's actually measuring clockwise, right? So I can actually end up drawing a, with those same two values I keyed in before, a two and a 45, 
if dynamic input is measuring clockwise, I'll get a totally different line. It'll be pointing down to the right. So I'll type in 2 tab 45, enter, enter to finish off. So you really have to pay attention uh, how it's measuring those values. But it's pretty nice. It saves you if you know how to do polar coordinates. It saves you from the at symbol. It saves you from the less than symbol. You can use those dynamic values in Canvas to easily get polar coordinates. Um, it has some impact on other commands as well. You can, um, for instance, the measure command. If I do a, uh, a distance with my dynamic input on of that line we just drew, notice it shows the results in Canvas. It also shows them down on the command line, but the dynamic input is the uh, showing it in Canvas. And it even gives me the sub prompts right at my cursor, so I don't have to go down to any of the sub prompts down here and click on them. I can pick them right from within my you know where my cursor's at now if i go ahead and toggle off my dynamic input do that exact same measurement distance you'll notice that there's no values in canvas here only the values show up down here at the command line so another thing that dynamic input brings to the table that i find pretty useful and valuable i'm going to toggle my dynamic input on again And you can toggle it right in the mid command. You don't even have to be out of a command per se. If you don't like some of the settings, maybe you don't like the polar coordinate setting and you want absolute coordinates and things like that, you can actually come down to dynamic input, right click on it and go to dynamic input settings. And there's some settings buttons under these two images at the top where I can click on this setting button and for the, uh, the next points, I want that to default to polar. That's what we have right now. Maybe I need it to default it uh, Cartesian, or I want relative or absolute. So I have some control over uh, what type of coordinate I want my dynamic input to default to. And I also can control um, the actual uh, input. Do I want one value or two values um, for input? Okay, so I can control that as well by clicking that other settings button. So I'm just going to cancel that. Um, probably the single biggest benefit that I find with dynamic input is related to the offset command. So what you'll see here in the graphic at the top is it took me eight offset commands to make that pattern using that first uh, vertical line on the left because every time the value changed, I had to go reset it and then set it back and then change it and et cetera. I can do it all with one offset command as long as my dynamic input is turned on because it'll give me an in canvas value that I can edit. So let me show you. I'll start my offset command. I'm gonna set my base distance to one because most of those values up there are one. So anytime it's one, I can just, like I normally would offset, select the object, select the side. But now that it changes, I need a three. I don't have to finish the command. I select the object, I move to the side I want to offset to, and it gives me that in canvas value that I can override. I can type in three and hit enter. Now, it'll always default back to the base, so it'll be one. That's what I need next, so just select and pick. Here's one I need to override, so I select, move to the side, and type in my override and hit enter. Here's another override. So select, move to the side, type it in, enter. Now I got a bunch of defaults, so I can just keep on going for a couple of these ones. There's another override, select, override, and then finally one base again, enter to finish off. So very quick, simple way to, um, to offset without having to go finish the command, go reset it, you know, and keep keep going through all that is leveraging the dynamic input functionality in the offset command. Um, just a note that sometimes dynamic input, depending on how good your graphics card might be, might have some uh, issues running it. Uh, if you see some ghosting going on, we kind of recommend that you turn your dynamic input off or your hardware accelerator off or both. Um, other than that, I highly recommend you try dynamic input. Uh, thanks for taking a deep dive and happy drafting.